Okay, hi there everybody, this is Marco from Fancy Lizard Studios. So, <clears throat> first up, for apologies in case you hear me cough, coughing a lot or hiccuping. I kind of am kind of getting sick and getting the hiccup, so that's not good. But, either ways, the show must go on. So, what we're going to be going over today is actually, well, excuse me, using ZBrush to actually model a character and everything. Now, when modeling like a character you draw or draw, one of the first things that you're going to want is either a front view, side view, or both. Both of those will be very helpful because they'll help you get proportions down right on your character, give you a little bit more of an idea how they look on the side. Even the back view would be awesome so that way you get a view of how they look on the back as well. So luckily for me, well, kind of, all and only view I drew up was just this. So it's kind of a side view, it's kind of not, but we're going to work with it. And then take artistic abilities to make them, you know, have a little bit more flair and everything. So one of the things that I love doing, at least that makes it e easier on me, is making sure you save your character concept, or what you do, as a PNG and make uh, the background transparent. Because that'll make it a lot easier in ZBrush. Now, as you guys probably saw, you guys probably noticed my little dog on there. So, here. <laughs> okay. So, first thing we're going to do is just close out the light box. So, I am going to mention some of these shortcuts on there, so in case you have ZBrush, you can follow along with your own character concept. So, you can just hit the comma button on your keyboard to bring it up and in. So in order to bring it, like to use a concept that you drew, we're going to go over here to te texture, hit import, and since mine's on the desktop, we're going to hand right over there, go to the folder where you have that concept, and bring it in. Now it's probably not going to show up, because it never does, but it might for you. We're going to click on the texture, and we're going to hit this button called add to spotlight. And then it's going to bring up the light box again, close that out by hitting the, comp, the comma, excuse me again. Okay, sorry about that, I had to cough in a bit. Okay, next thing we're going to go is we're going to go to brush over here. Because once we start modeling and everything, we're going to come into an issue, but we're going to get rid of that issue as fast as we can. We're going to go to samples, and we're going to turn off spotlight projection. Now this is useful for other things, but for this, we're not going to use it right now. So we're just going to hit that, turn that off, shrink this guy just a bit, and put him around the in the corner so we can have him there. And then to get this down, we'll hit Z. So Z brings in the spotlight menu, and if you hit it again, it makes it disappear. Now, in order to get this concept started, there's a whole bunch of different ways. One, we could have started with one of these dyno meshes already pre-made for us. We could use a mannequin, a mannequin to actually start it up and have some bases there. But the method we're going to use is going to be called Z Spears within ZBrush. So we're just going to go over here, click on this guy. And now we have the tool loaded into our thing. And then we're going to click, and I like using shift to make sure it's perfectly horizontal. And then let go there. And then we're going to hit T on our keyboard to enter edit mode. In case you need to know where their shortcuts are, usually ZBrush is pretty awesome. You can just hover over them, and it tells you the keyboard shortcut on them. So we're going to hit T to go into edit mode. Hold control on your keyboard. And right now I'm using my mouse, and we're going to right click to zoom in. And drag in and out. And that's how you zoom in. Now, one of the first things most people are going to notice is that he has two arms, and we don't have symmetry on. This is going to be a big problem for us, so... Luckily, though, we're going to fix that real fast and everything. So, we're going to hit Ctrl Z, and we're actually just going to hit X on the keyboard. And with that, we're actually going to see two awesome little guys pop up. So now we have two circles, which allows us to do symmetry just like that. We can go like crazy, however we want. 
but we need to use this to make some arms and legs. So I'm going to start with the legs real fast. Go scroll down. Let's see. That's good for now. And then the rotate. I should mention that. The rotate, you'll hold shift. Actually, you don't even have to hold shift. Actually, all you need to do is just click on the background and right click, and you can rotate to your heart's content. Now, one of the cool things is though, let's say you're stuck in here, but you want a perfect right angle, hold shift and then while right clicking out there, it'll work. So be sure to right click first and you rotate, then hold shift and you can rotate at different angles that you need. So in case you're like stuck in some weird position, you don't like it, want to go back to the front, let's do that. Now let's get this legs position right. So now we're going to hit the W on the keyboard to enter in the move mode so we can actually move these Z spheres. So we're going to move it to there. Let's see, do I like that placement? That's not too bad. Okay, then we'll hit Q on the keyboard again to enter draw mode. Now, don't hit T again, because you'll exit out of edit mode, and then you won't be able to use these guys. So make sure this guy is always on, and in case it's not, just hit T again. And then we'll go back to Q. Then we'll drag right here. And then hold shift if you just want it to automatically go to the size of the Z sphere you're drawing on. So if I don't, I can go as big. If I hold shift, it automatically goes to that exact same size. So I'm going to use move to move down his legs just a bit. Or actually, I'm going to grab this leg, look down just a bit. And we're actually, I'm actually going to move it back up. So let's control Z. We're going to enter scale of E. Scale this guy back up. There we go. Then we're actually going to move this back guy back in. There we go. That looks a lot better. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to give him a little bit of a knees. This is taking a little bit of artistic abilities. Because in the image of there, he kind of has no knees, but I'm going to give him some knees. Exactly the same thing. Should have to drag a little bit down. There we go. I don't like the way that's bending. Let's put that back in. And then we're going to scale this guy up just a little bit. And scale this guy down just a bit. And there we go. Oh, that's a lot better. I'm going to go back to the move tool, move it down just a bit, right about there. So, I'm going to move this to the side just a bit. There we go. Go back to the drum. We're going to give him his toes now. And you see how that happens. That, in case that happens, means that your Z-spheres are a little too close and will phase through. And bad things can happen with that. So, for example, if you hit A in your keyboard, it gives you an idea of how your skin is going to look like. So, as you can see, I just got legs right now. But here, I'll show you what I mean. So let's say he had really big toes. We're going to scale this guy up like crazy, thinking that, oh, sweet, he's going to have a giant toe. And you can see now it's affecting that one. He's going to have a giant toe. We hit A, we start getting things like that. If we keep going higher and higher, thinking like, yeah, he's got now giant shoes. We hit A, that change won't happen. Because it's going in through so many things. And this little guy is letting you know, hey, it's a little too big. I want you to shrink it down. Luckily, we're not going that high. So here, let's go back to the original size. There we go. Almost there. And then we're going to move this guy just a bit. There we go. And we're going to scale it down by hitting E. And then we'll move it down just a bit. There we go. You know, keep in mind there might be some buffering, but that's perfectly normal. So apologies if the video is a little bit slowed down. It's most likely because of my internet speed, but no worries. Okay, there we go. And then with the foot, we're going to take some a little bit more artistic abilities because we're going to try to make it a little bit more realistic. So we'll drag that out there. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna grab this 
do it again. Oh. Now, if that happens when you're moving two of them, it's very simple. It's practically your brush is so big that you're actually, it thinks that you want to grab both of them. So if you just want to grab one, just turn down your brush size by hitting S or by going up here. Thing is, turn that to something smaller. I don't want it that small. And now I'm only going to be able to drag that guy. The reason why I give them this photo curve is because their feet kind of curve just a bit. Not by much. But just a bit. as possible. Actually, I don't like that. We're going to keep it back to non-realistic. So in order to delete a Z-sphere that you don't like, go back to draw mode, which is Q, hold Alt, and then click on the sphere you don't like, and bam, gone. Okay. And I don't like how his toes are pointing there, so we're going to grab this just a bit. Move it out. Let's see. Put that right there. Actually, it doesn't look like it too much, but to me it makes more sense. Now to add another Z-sphere though, just click on, let's say you wanted to add a sphere right there, click on one of these little things. Practically, this gives you an indication if you were to actually draw this sphere by sphere and add it on and add it on. That's how it would go. So let's say I want one right here. Click it there. Bam. Done. Put a Z sphere there. Okay. There we go. I like that a lot better. Simple detail, but I like that a lot more. So now we're going to zoom back out. Come back in here. This all adjusted real fast. Okay, let's zoom out just a bit. So you can see we're starting to get the bases of his legs and everything. Now he's kind of has a really big belly, so we're gonna have to make that bigger somehow. So we're gonna go back to our Z spheres, click and drag, make that. And I like the way that looks. We're gonna drag this down just a bit, so there's just one. It's a little too much. There we go. So now he kind of has his belly there going. Now keep in mind we'll adjust all of this and everything. Make it look a lot more nicer. But this just gives us a general idea so we have a body to work with once we're ready to go sculpting. Same thing. We'll go now. We're going to create some more. So we'll go right there. Go to move mode to move it where you want it in case you didn't place it where you want it. I like the placement of those arms. So now we're going to add the next part of his arms. Simple as that. Grab the move tool, drag it out just a bit because he doesn't have that big of arms. And we're actually going to shrink this down to about there. And then we're going to actually increase this guy just a little bit. And then bring it in. Actually, we might need the. Now, all this is just experimentation. The more you practice, the more it gets better. So, don't ever be like, oh man, this looks awful, and be like, I'm never going to get this down. Just keep practicing. Not even I'm the best on this one. Some people can do this way faster than I can, but hey, practice makes perfect. Let's go it up just a bit. I know we're just going to work with this size. What happened there? As you can see, we created a skull, a whole another system. For another one, I think I know why. It's probably because I had this guy selected. 
And I hit draw, and it uh, yep, and that's exactly what happened. Things you learned today. Let's try that again. There we go. Much better. So be sure to click on the, the last Z spear you wanted to draw on, or else it's going to create another another practically limb coming from there. And you kind of don't want that to happen. Unless that's what you're shooting for your character. I'll pull that in. Oh, here we go. Scale this down just a bit. There we go. As you can see, he's starting to get his arms. Now, don't worry about this twisting thing, because we're actually just going to be sculpting on it, and we're going to get rid of it by using one of the Z spirit, one of the Z brushes. Um, best features. So here. I like the way that looks. Okay, now let's give him his little hand. Now, I'm kind of grading this to the certain way I want him. Technically, he's just going to be for a 2D, but I might as well make him 3D because I can. So here. Then you're probably hearing my mouse click a lot. Sorry about that. I will be using my tablet, but it kind of broke, so there's that. And we're just going to scale this down just a little bit. There we go. And then we're going to give him an opposable thumb. So we're going to draw a C spear right there. Actually, a little bit there. And we're going to drag this little guy right here. <coughs> Actually, let's draw a C spear over here. There we go. Move tool. Now he has an opposable thumb. Now it's not the best thumb in the world, but we're gonna get that sculpted in a little bit more. So it just gives us a like a base plan to work off from. Just a bit more. All right, I like the way that's looking. Let's grab the move tool cool thing and also in case you wanted to move the whole thing like say you like the way this is but you want this at a different angle click on one of these little bones I'm gonna call you can actually rotate a lot of the thing now keep in mind if you rotate it too much you can see that starts to happen so don't go all wazzy and go like woo that's great and it's just for minor adjustments it helps so in case you never needed to move thing but not by much the whole arm. That helps a lot. So now let's get to his head. Okay. Now my little guy, he doesn't have a neck technically, but his 3D version will. And then if I can get rid of it, awesome. Which I should be able to, but for all sakes and purposes, creative taking creative ability. His arms need to be a little thicker. No, I, I technically I can work off of this the way it is, but what you would like sometimes to do is try to get it as close as possible to the way you actually want it. So that way I like the head better that way. So that way you don't have to work your way up to get most of that. You want to get generally all the forms that you want here. Scale it up just a bit. Let's get this guy up. Scale it up just a bit. Actually, I'm bring those arms back in. Oh. There we 
little bring it back in just a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit more stumpy than it, so I'll definitely bring this guy in. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the extremes now. This one, bring this guy way in. Bringing him way in, too. This guy. There we go. As you can see, sometimes it's just because of another Z spears and the long range, like, whoa, this is too much. You can easily fix it now. There we go, he's getting a little bit more short and stuff the arms. Okay. So, I actually kind of like this body. So, yeah, this will actually do. Now, for right here on the neck, I am going to have to add a little bit more. But, we'll get to that once we get to there. So, when we got that all done. Now, the key that we're using to get this is called Adaptive Skin, and it's automatically binded to A. So we'll go here. This is how we adjust. How thick he, how many um, subdivisions he has. So if we go down to one, that's how it will look. Once you make the scan ship, but see that's really, really, really low poly. That's not what I want. I want it to keep as much detail, so I'm going to kick that up. Kick this up just by, there we go, 10. Let's see, got a little bit more detail, it's a lot more smoother. I actually like the way that's going. But I'm going to move this opposable thumb just a bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So here. Go back and check on the stream. See what's happening. Okay. Just checking out some things, making sure all of this is still working. Okay, while we wait for that, we're actually going to make this into, into something we can actually sculpt on. So right now I can't do anything because it's technically still this. So it's still made out of Z-Spheres, it's not an actual 3D mesh we can work on. So we're just going to hit A, we'll come over here to the Adaptive Skin tab, and we're going to go up here and click Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now in, now in the toolbox you'll now have one that says Z-Spheres, and one that says PDM Sphere Z-Sphere. Practically that's your skin. So we'll go back to this one, I'll be able to hit A, this one has all my Z-Spheres creation, well, if I go over here, I hit A, there's nothing. This is our full-on model, that our skin, practically. So here, Alright, 
So now that we got that made into a real skin. Before we start sculpting, technically you could sculpt this way. Subdivide, subdivide. Hit X to make sure you have subdivisions. Let's kick this up just a bit. Start sculpting this way. But since I don't have all the details that I want, I'm actually not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here on the toolbar. Go down here to this awesome little tab called Geometry. Then we're going to go down here to Dynamesh. And things that I like turning off, you can keep these on or not, is practically this one. I like turning off Blur. Blur practically gives um, an amount of how much detail is practically going to get blurred down, smooth, to make it look pretty smooth. I want it to be pretty jagged. And then Project is how much it's going to save when it dynameshes. I'm going to turn off a little bit of that down because I don't want it to uh, take forever. So then you have to choose your resolution. So this is pretty important too because it depends on your computer and everything how high you can kick this up because if you kick this really high it's going to make your computer slow. So here we're going to try it with just 128. Usually 64, 128 or even 164 are pretty good numbers to any mesh at because this is not where you're going to be making all your exquisite details like I'm going to be detailing eyebrows, putting in little moles or anything, wrinkles or anything like that. That's not what this is meant for. Technically you can, but you would have to kick this up all the way. But we'll, just, we'll get to there once we get that, so how you get those details. So first we're just going to see how good 128 is. As you can see, I like the way that looks. It's not too bad. One way, the easy way to seeing the polygon that amount you have is either hitting Shift F or just coming down here. See, I don't like the way that looks. So now we're gonna get sculpting. So right now, since I'm using a mouse, it's gonna be a little bit more harder for me to get the details I want. It's, ZBrush is a little bit nicer if you have a graphics tablet, practically any of the Wacom or any of the other pen pressure tablets available. It does make life a little bit easier, but you can make do with a mouse. One of the thing, big things that you would definitely want to have turned on with a mouse is Lazy Brush. So it kind of it gets the stuff done that you want. Now when sculpting, there's two things you want to be sure that you know which shortcuts they are. That would be the strength, which would be you. Practically, if you're on a tablet, you can turn this down a bit, but you'll be able to control the strength of your pressure versus people who are using your mouse like me right now. We're going to have to turn that down pretty low until we get it the spot that we like. Like for that, that's pretty good. Okay. Then make sure lazy mouse is on. Easiest way to check if it's on, go to stroke or go to the tab lazy mouse and you'll see it here. Easy way to turn it on and off is L on the keyboard. So when I like to add clay on here, I like to go into the clay buildup or actual clay. Let's add some of his little figure on there. So for his head, we're going to actually not use the clay tool. We're just going to go come here to his legs and his belly. Kind of has a little bit bigger than a belly than what he has right now. So let's move that out just a bit. Now we're just going to drag that out like that, drag that out like that, like that, and smooth, smooth, smooth. And do it again. The reason I do that is because it keeps the topology a little bit nicer. Plus, you get the, at least with a mouse, it helps you keep everything under control. So there we go. Okay, as you can see, he's starting to lose some of his roundness, so kind of have to add a little bit more up here. Okay, there we go. Smooth, smooth, smooth. All right. Gonna have to add a little bit more down there. It's going to kick this brush device down just a bit. All right. That's pretty good. I like the way that's starting to come out. Well, his legs is a little bit more chubbier, so got a little bit of more meat on there. Okay. Come over 
here, let's put there. Remember to zoom in, use control, rotate, you can rotate out there. Rotate, you can rotate, sorry, you can rotate by holding the right click. <laughs> Gotta mention my shortcuts, or else you guys will never know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. And keep in mind, this is just what I'm going to be doing for this video. I might continue this on my next one, depending see what we can get, what other details we can learn and everything, or I might go on to my texturing doing using software like Quixel or Substance to texture either a car or one of the guns we're working on. The reason I'm not doing that now is because my main desktop is having some issues and I gotta get that fixed right now. So, we went with ZBrush. Luckily though with these skills and everything you know, like sculpting, taking it easy, and I try not to focus on one area. So let's say I'm really focusing on not, not there. Oops, inappropriate. Let's say I'm really focusing on this armpit, trying to get this all the way down. Sometimes you'll get too much in the zone, and you'll forget about everything else. And you know this part will look amazing, but it still looks off because you're like, what's happening? What you want to do is, of case, try to work on all the pieces. Because right now we're not focusing on detail, we're focusing on the structure, the bottom, the form, and the proportion. It's trying to get that all right. So and this this part or whatever sculpting software you're using, try to get the form, the proportions right first before entering any type of detail. Okay. Now this is just one way to get the proportions right. A faster way, which I like doing most of the time, is actually going to your brushes, watch in ZBrush you'll hit B, or go to right here, the brush tab right there, if you have the interface of default. Oh, I didn't want to hit that button. And I'll pull up your brushes. I like to go to the move tool. Move topology is nice. When you want to move specific topology, the move tool gets the job done though. And since we're in Titan Mesh, we're not really worried about topology. So we'll just go to that one. And then we can actually move a lot more. So let's say, for example, I want to have a big giant belly button or a mouth down there. Don't know. You can do that. Now, one thing about the move tool, though, is that it only focuses around the inner circle. So you see how there's the outer circle and then the inner? The inner circle is what's going to get most of the attention. The outer circle is going to get the least amount. Think of it as, you know, uh, it's a gradient. In the center is the strongest, then when it goes to the outer, it gets a little bit weaker. So, you could say you want your move tool to actually pick up a lot more. We're going to hit O on the keyboard and then we're going to change this to negative so the more negative it is the bigger it gets that inner circle so practically what that means as you can see I'm able to now get pick up a lot more instead of having that smooth transition so in case you want something pretty harsh here we go O negative 100 so now I don't have anything that's super smooth I literally grab what polygons I can grab in that inner circle. So there's absolutely no smoothness. So in case I really wanted to create another limb that simple without using Z-spheres or anything, I would literally just use that. But that's not what I want. I want it to be strong, but not that strong. So we're just going to go with 20. Oh, I'm in draw size. Let's put this back up. Go to O negative 20 there we go and we're gonna kick this guy up just by there to get the draw size just hit s or come back here and i'll tell you yeah let's see i'll see no questions so far so in case you have any questions or any tips or tricks too because 
That works as well. When you share tips for me, I share tips for you. You know, because one thing about this is that it takes a while to learn. And don't keep secrets away from each other. So let's say you're working in a group for some odd reason. Well, you're working for a group, not some odd reason. You know why you're working for a group. For a group. And let's say you find a real cool tool that's pretty helpful and it could help one of your group members or colleagues. Definitely share that. One, it speeds up the process. Two, they gain a new set of tools on how to make their process go faster. Plus, you might learn something in the side too. So let's say they learn something, they tell you about it. You just learn to model faster, draw faster, or anything like that. And then let's say I did add that extra one. I wanted to have those two things. See how these polygons are starting to stretch like crazy. And then when I try to move this, it's like horrid. Cool thing about Dynamesh is that I can just hold control, scroll all the way down here. Make sure you don't have any of the poly selected or else you're gonna mask that area. Just hold control, go over here. And then I'll read Dynamesh and give you brand new topology so that way your polygons don't get stretched out like crazy. Get rid of that because I don't want that to happen. This little guy. Okay. So now I'm just going to be fixing them up so if I get quiet, don't be like, what's just happened? He's gone silent. Nope, I'm still alive here. I'm just getting into the zone now. If I see anything that worth mentioning, I'll let you guys know. If you have any questions, though, if I, let's say I did something and you guys are like, oh, whoa, whoa, slow down, definitely leave a comment. And yeah. That's a little too strong. Still a little strong for my taste. I'm gonna actually decrease the strength just a bit more. There we go. A little too strong, but the right strength.
And sometimes using the mass tool can be very useful because you can cover spots that you don't want to affect. So I really don't want to affect those guys, and I don't want it to be that strong, so I'm just going to click in the mask, weaken it just a bit, so it still affects it, but not by much. And then just get out of that mask area so to clear it. So if I did that, let's go just right click. No, sorry. So if I did that, then I want that to happen. You can either hit Control Z or once you're done, let's say I wanted that to happen there. I would just hit Control, drag out here, and it's gone. So with that one, what I did right there, once I sculpt my detailed, I wanted to do there, but now I needed to dynamesh. Do it once, do it twice, and that becomes part. Redoes the topology for you. It's making sure your polygons don't get super stretched. So now we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to get to the fun part his head. So he kind of has a little bit of a chubby cheeks. But I don't want to affect this bottom area real fast. Actually, I don't like the way his belly is now anymore. So you can, so you can see, the more you work on your character, there's going to be little things you don't like. I like how it's so big, plus it needs a chest. So, give him a little bit of a belly, soften it out just a bit, swirl it down just a bit there, pull it down just a bit, there we go, now he's starting to get his belly. Probably the reason why I don't like it is because of his back area. There we go. Kind of wait for a ZBrush to load back up because now that I like saving, it has an auto save feature which still you can disable. You can look it up, but I'm, I'll show you just a little bit how to do it. So let's say you don't like the auto saving, we'll go to preferences, we'll go to do a quick save, and you can decide to turn how, how often it's going to do it. You can set it all the way to who knows where. You can decide how much is going to save, and if it's going to skip the history or not. Skipping the history makes it awesome, because one thing about ZBrush is that it'll save all of your edits. So practically all of the things you did to your model, it will save every single thing. So we can literally go all the way back and everything here. Before I do that, let me just make sure save your file always, even though quick save is on. I save this as a desktop. I'm gonna call this Wi-Fi Man 3 3D. It's gonna automatically create a folder for you, but you can literally go all the way back to when he was just that. But it's a pretty awesome feature. Makes life a lot easier. So in case you wanted to see where you went wrong. Because sometimes that happens, sometimes you get to a part where you're like, this is not right, what happened? You can scroll back or, and see what happened. Or in case you want to see how much process you made, you can do that too. It's pretty nifty. It's pretty cool when you do it with a, dyna, with a dyna mesh with the light box. Those guys. These guys here. One of these dyna meshes, because then you get to see when it was just a little spear. Scroll back, and you can see, wow, that's pretty cool from where you got. Okay. Go back to these legs.
No, we are, we're gonna do bed. So I like the way that looks. That's pretty good. I actually like the way that body form looks. Except down here, I don't like the way that's happening. So we'll fix that just a bit. Let's we'll move out. Tiny mesh. So that's a pretty hard edge there. There we go. We'll give this foot a little bit more meat. Then grab the clay build up brush. Meat right there. Dino mesh. There we go. That's looking a little bit in the right there. Tiny mesh. That looks a little bit off there. That's better. Yeah, that can do. That'll do for now. Okay, and now we're going to get to the fun part, which is the head. So, I'm just going to cover this bottom part. So, really, I don't want to. Uh, accidentally grab any of that and accidentally mess it up. But we can edit it just a bit. There we go. That'll be fine. Now, since I'm going to be doing some big changes, we're going to go with the move brush. Kick the size up just a bit. And now we're going to edit to make sure his head looks the way I want it to be. Move that down. Pull that in. Wow. Grab his cheeks. Well, where his cheeks are going to be. And there we go. Make sure he's got his chin there. Let's move down just a bit. Or actually, squeeze that part of his head in. There we go. Bring out his forehead. And sure there's a skull right here. Let's move that back in. Push down just a bit. There we go. There we go, Wi Fi man. You're slowly coming to life. Now, to make your eyes sockets, we're going to go to this awesome brush called Insert Spear. We're going to hold Alt, Alt with any of the brushes. So, for example, Alt digs in. You can't really tell with that one. Yeah, there we go. So it gets more powerful. That one. Well, digs into the mesh. So as you can see, I'm digging inside. Rish is just drawing like usual. Adds on top of the mesh. So we're going to that back down. We're going to go back to Insert Sphere. And we're going to create his eye sockets. I want them to be around there. Holding Alt first before you draw. There's that. Then we're just going to do exactly the same thing since we're on Dynamesh. We'll right click there, right click one more time, and now we got a basis for eye sockets. So now we're going to go back to my move brush so I can fix these guys. Move that down just a bit. Actually, I want to make sure he has a little bit of a brain so you can tell where his eyes were. Mass that out just a little bit. Click that in just a bit. Scroll in. Last one else. Big. And we're just going to drag that in just a bit. There we go. So we're slowly starting to take its face. Definitely don't want that to happen though. 
Circle is eye sockets. That's the part I want to be changing the most. Now he's starting to look like Deadpool. There we go. One more. Actually, because he's got more elongated eyes. Drag that over there. Drag this in just a bit. Pull this guy up. There we go. Wi Fi man's slowly starting to come back. And just a bit, drag that up there. Yeah, I like the way that's placed. I click, dynamesh it again. Now we're going to shrink my brush, smooth this guy out, because Wi Fi Man is not a bad guy. Well, he could be. You'll never know. Maybe he's evil. Maybe he's a good guy disguised as a bad guy. The world will never know. And then he's got a little bit bigger of a forehead. So, we're drawing our brush back out. Come up here, set that up. Just make it up. One cool thing about ZBrush 2 as well, let's say I want to fix his head, his eyes are a little bit wide, but I want to fix his whole head too without doing all that. So we're scrolling over the parts we don't want to adjust, and then we'll come here, hold, control the mask, and we'll just mask out that little brown part. As you can see my brush is a little too big, so go around here. As you can see we might need to dynamesh that a little bit more. That'll be fine. We can fix that part. Scroll around there. Okay, let's close this pause wall. That's good for now. And then we're going to go to this awesome guy right here called Blue. Now, since we have symmetry on, it's going to be a little bit weird, but we're just going to drag the move thing here, hold shift to align it. Then we're going to grab this middle circle. We can actually stretch his head to as far as we want, or shrink it as much as we want, or if we want that. Practically, this is just a cool way to actually move things a lot faster. So, in case you need this head to be a little bit wider, you just do that. Oh, don't do what I do. And that's how you make it wider. If you grab this guy, you actually can move it that way. So in case you want to be like that. That looks sad. <laughs> it's not too happy that way. You can move the head to wherever you need to be. As you can see there. I like the way that's poised. So, pretty exactly the same thing. Dynamish it again. And we're going to hit Q to go back to our drop. Oh, well, I'm still move. Oops. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I don't like how that's looking. So I got my move to I'm just doing a specific area. Brush tool to add a little bit of meat on top of here. Oh, that's a lot too much. Should have to shrink that down just a bit. I'm gonna go to the back then. Remember, we're just adding meat, we're not focusing into details. 
trying to get his proportions right before we get into details like sculpting in his skin, let's say he has freckles, or anything like that. One thing that I want is his cheeks to be just a little bit bigger. So I don't want to affect his eyes though, looks like the way those are positioned. I'm going to mask those out real fast. Again, to mask things out, you'll hold control. Control, then click on the mesh. And let's say you messed out a little bit too much, you'll hold Control, Alt, then you can practically remove part of that mask that you didn't want. And go back in, a little bit more. That's pretty good. There we go. Now I'm going to go back to here to edit these cheeks. I go a little bit bigger. Now it looks creepy. I like it, but that is not the goal. There we go. He's starting to get those cheeks that I want. Yeah, that's the way. Move tool, just a bit. Again, you could technically do all of this with the move tool, but I like getting more precise, having a little bit, adding layer by layer until I get it the way I want it. There we go. I'm sure to get those chubby cheeks that he's meant to have. We'll come up here, smooth that out just a bit. Got our clay buildup tool it might be a little strong here, so we're going to bring it down to tool. Now the reason I'm lowering it up and down, well, at least by changing the strength, is because one, if a mouse, you're going to have to do that a lot more often. With a pen, you technically won't need to because you can control the strength of the stroke. But sometimes it's nicer just to have to go piece by piece, adding little bit by little bit. Don't add, like, don't have your brush strength, even if a pen pressure be at 50, because you'll get big changes like that, and you would literally have to touch it very, very, very lightly. So you will have to change it, but not as drastically as a mouse user. Like, when I have my tablet, I rarely go to 5. I usually have it either on 20, or at least on strength. But since right now I'm using my mouse, I need to start with that low of uh, strength. Spin that out just a minute. Alright, then let's give your neck a little bit more definition. One brush that I like to use to give a little bit more definition in the neck is the damn standard brush. So, I know it sounds horrible, the damn standard your brush. Practically think of it as the super ultimate precise tool. So. Here, I'm going to lower the strength because this guy is pretty strong. We'll see how much 5 is. Actually, it's not that bad on 5. At least, you know. Yeah, it's not that bad. So you can see, practically think of it as a pinch tool. So here, let me turn it up by a lot. Even though 25 is great for a pen user, at least for me. Or 20. As you can see, that's what that does. Gives him like, it practically pinches and brings all those in. Practically, it's a great way to get those thin tags or to get a better definition, like for example, what I'm doing right now. Oh, draw size. Let's put that down to 10. 10 might be good. There we go. Pinch that in just a bit more. Dialish. Let's pinch that in just a bit more. That's what I want. Yeah, that works. I won't be on the pack by smoothing it. And then I want his chest to be a little bit more inward. I want this belly to pop out that much. Oh, that's a little bit too much of a strength for another three. Let's see if that helps. Yes, a little bit more control. 
might be also my brush size since I have it so big right now. There we go. There we go. Now you can definitely tell that he's been through a lot. Protecting the internet's not an easy thing. There we go. I'm going to grab the brush, the move brush. There we go. Oh, got a freezing brush. Okay, since it kind of needs eyeballs, I'm going to go back to the insert sphere. I'm going to grab this guy, drag him in. Now, it technically has eyeballs and everything, but if we were to go and kind of mesh it, it's still it's going to mesh that inside of there. I like having it separate, so we'll go to the sub tool. We'll go over here to split, go to split to similar parts, and then always hit OK. This is undoable, so let's say you're not so sure. Always save, but I'm sure what I want. I want this. So now I'll have these on two separate, practically, meshes. So right now I'm still on the body. So if I wanted to edit the eyes, as you can see, that's a wrong tool. I wanted to edit the eyes, I can't do that at all. One, because we're not on the same mesh, and that's the main reason. There's no two. <laughs> now, if I go over here and click on that one, sphere, let me rename that. I'm gonna call that eyes. The rename things just go to the name. Now I can edit these eyeballs. Oh. Well, it looks like my ZBrush just crashed. Well, hopefully, well, as you can see, I did not save. So, we're going to have to open that mat again. Well, luckily, you'll get to see a picture of my dough. We're going to open that back up. Hopefully, the quick save has a recent save, because I know I did not save for a while. Let's see. Uh, there we go, as you can see, it's other things I've been working on. And when you look at that, we're here. So let's try that one more time. Let's grab our move brush. That's pretty high strength, so we're going to lower that to 20. And I want to see a little bit inside, so we're going to turn the transform on. That's why it makes the other mesh that we're not working on transparent. And get this as great as possible. The size is good. My focal shift could be a little bit bigger. There we go. Oop. I'm going to grab it there. Grab that down just a bit. Grab this guy up just a bit. And then we're going to see if this is on Dynamesh. It is, so hooray, we have that going. And go down just a bit. Just to make it look uniform, because his eye sockets are not round. And the eyes are technically look round. They're not the roundest, but you get my point. Let's see. Yeah, definitely didn't like the way that looks. His eyeballs might be sticking out a little bit more, kind of makes him look like he's either in, what's the word I'm looking for? He's got some serious eye issues, or he's, yeah, serious eye issues. He's got serious eye issues. There we go. Just turn off this transparency. Yeah, I like that way better. Yeah, definitely like that. So we're going to leave that there. We're going to go back to the skin. And this time, let's make sure to save. So I'll hit Control Shift S. Oh, never mind. I thought I was in. Let's 
Control S. I thought I was in Photoshop, so Control S. We're gonna say this is the desktop. Save the Wi-Fi man. Oops, I. There we go. Got that shortcut created now. And we're gonna go to this guy. Lower this guy down by a bit. See how does? Nope, oh, that's too low. How does 15 look like? That's good. Let's get this lowered down to 10. Raise this up just a bit actually. Let's go to 20 in there. Whoa, that strike is way stronger than I thought. I forgot. Ten. That was better. Let's go out. And Wi-Fi man, you look adorable. Maybe scary to some, but to me you look adorable. Here. And then... Oh, as you can see, I lost my texture. And that's probably gone. So we're gonna add back in. Go right here, click on them. Put that, close the light box. Shrink them down just a little bit. Them up from there, go to brushes, turn off samples, and turn off spotlight projection. Because if you don't, here I'll show you what I mean. If you don't turn off spotlight projection, I'm actually going to be scaling. It's great to use as a texture, but I'm going to be painting him onto here. It's pretty nifty, it works a lot better when we're into higher detail. But, since he's not really a texture, you can just use him for concept. I'm going to turn that off, hit Z, put him back in the corner where I want him. There we go. And then, taking some artistic abilities, I'm going to give him that little eyelid muscle that's always under there. I'm going to define it a little bit more. Let's move that out. Eh, actually, I like it better that way. There we go. And there's something I just realized. I don't think symmetry was on. So we're actually going to have to go all the way back. The symmetry was on there. It's on there. Apparently, I must have turned it off somewhere. I don't remember where. So, if you move back too far, practically it's going to ask you if you want to continue from where you left, where you liked it, from undoing. But it's going to delete all the other changes. So, if the change you did wasn't so drastic and you can easily fix it by just using your brush, do it that way. Because if you have to undo to fix just one little, let's say, finger while you made already a whole bunch of changes to the arm, just use your brush and fix it from there instead of going all the way back because that can be a time hassle. So let's give them those eyelid muscles. There we go. Gotta shrink them down just a bit. Let's move this bottom part. Smooth that. Now sometimes you want to get a little bit more detail than that with Dynamesh. Technically I don't have to do this, I'll most likely do it when I do the full retopology to add those details. But for now, I'll get it done now. I actually don't like it at all. So, so just a bit because he's not supposed to look menacing. 
He looks menacing now. Let's undo all that. There we go, now he looks happy again. Actually, I know it's your way to get the thing you want. Yep, I should have done this way before. Mm. Cool. 